All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you for tuning in again. Today we're talking about uh, 10.4, which is hyperbolas, which are a pretty cool conic section that we're going to talk about. Um, the, the notes are four pages, but we're splitting this over two days. So today we're going to do the first three out of six examples. There's not much writing on the first page, but we'll do example one, example two, and example three, just to make it a little more manageable. Three is some more completing the square. And then next week on Monday, Tuesday, we'll do um, example four, which is completing the square, and then a couple challenge problems. So just to make it more manageable, we'll split it in two days. Hyperbolas. First, let's talk about the equation. So you guys can see from the equation here, um, this looks almost identical to ellipses. The only, only, only difference is this minus sign. Okay, um, that's the only difference. Um, so the shape itself is definitely different, but the, the formula is basically the same except for that symbol. So here are your vertices. And the part that I'm highlighting in red is the only part that's part of your graph. Everything else, this box in the middle and the X on the diagonals, those are um, just guidelines so that you can figure out what the shape is going to be. So over here, same thing. This is really the only... Um, this branch and this lower branch are the only parts of your hyperbola, okay? So you'll notice one of these hyperbolas opens horizontally. This first one is opening left and right. Second one opens up and down vertically. Um, the way you tell the direction it's going to open has nothing to do with the size of these denominators, okay? The only thing that determines that is going to be, um, well, if we notice we have a positive fraction, and I'll call this second one a negative fraction because we're subtracting it, okay? Um, the x is part of the positive fraction, so that tells me I'm opening horizontally, left and right. Over here, y is part of my positive fraction, right? The second one is being subtracted, so we consider the x minus h fraction negative. Since this is part of the positive fraction, this is going to open vertically, up and down. Okay, so that's kind of the easiest way that I think of it. Um, a squared and B squared, in this one, really doesn't matter which one you call what, but for all intents and purposes, let's just call the first denominator under the positive fraction A squared. Okay, um, so we'll go through all the features of this, but you're going to have two vertices. Okay. Um, you're going to have a focus inside each of the branches. So again, that's foci is the plural. And um, we're going to have some co-vertices over there. Okay, so co-vertices, co co-vertices. Here's a vertex, vertex, focus, focus. Um, we don't have a major and a minor axis. What we do have is a, this axis here, maybe I should draw that as a dotted line. Um, this axis here is called our transverse axis. Trans means across, verse looks like vertex. So think that's the one that crosses your vertices, okay? It connects the two vertices here. That's your transverse axis. It's always going to be in the same direction that you're opening up. So it uh, doesn't mean that it's going to be longer than the other one, than the other axis that we'll talk about in a second. It just means it's the one that connects your vertices in the direction that you open up. So if you open horizontally, your transverse axis is horizontal. The other axis... This one here that connects your co-vertices, it's called your conjugate axis. And I would just remember that's the one that starts with a C, connects your co-vertices, your conjugate, right? Connects your co-vertices. Okay, so how do I know from the equation that this conic section will be a hyperbola instead of an ellipse? Um, we are subtracting... Our fraction. 
remember with an ellipse, we were adding the two fractions. Um, how do I know if it's going to open up or down, left or right? Um, up or down, this will be determined by um, if I have a positive y fraction. Left and right means I have a positive x fraction. So if you write it as the first one minus the second one, the first one indicates the direction you're going to open up. I guess it is possible to write negative y minus k squared over b squared plus x minus h squared over a squared. Usually we wouldn't write that. We would just have our positive fraction first. So the if you write it that way, your first fraction can indicate the direction you open. All right, so let's dig in here. This first one is not presented in standard form, but we dealt with a very similar problem when we did our ellipses yesterday. I want this equal to 1. That stays the same with um, hyperbolas here. Uh, so let's reduce these fractions. 9 over 36 is 1 over 4, so I have x plus 2 squared over 4 minus 4 over 36 is 1 over 9. y minus 1 squared over 9 equals 1. So there's my standard form. Um, all right, my key features, my center is going to be negative 2, 1. And you can sketch over here. Negative 2, 1. Graphing is a little complicated, so make sure you guys are following along with us. Um, my vertices. <clears throat> okay, so my vertices are going to be along... Uh, they're going to be left and right because x is my first fraction. It's my positive fraction, right? So this is going to open horizontally because x is the positive fraction. So um, this 4 indicates the number of spaces I'll move left and right, but I need to take the squared root. So um, that becomes 2. So I'm going to move 2 units left and right. And that'll tell me where my vertices are located. So vertices, um, negative 2, 1. I'm going 2 left and 2 right from there. So it should be negative 4, 1, and 0, 1. Let's find the covertices. So uh, this 9 underneath my y fraction indicates or gives me information about the number of spaces I'll move. Square root of 9 is 3. So I'm going to go 3 spaces up and down from center. So there's a covertex. Here's a covertex. So that's going to be at negative 2, negative 2, <clears throat> negative 2, Okay, at this point I can sketch my, my hyperbola. Here's, here's a goofy thing, but we need, to, we need to create a box. Where each vertex and covertex is the midpoint of either a vertical or horizontal side. Okay, um, then I want to, from my center, Sketch, these are called slant asymptotes. We know what asymptotes are, and they're diagonal, they're slanted. These are going to guide the branches of your hyperbola. So we said this was a vertex. So I'm just going to kind of follow these slant asymptotes, and the red branches are my hyperbola. So I'm done with my sketch. Um, other than finding the foci. So direction of the transverse axis, we did that. It's horizontal. Um, foci, last thing. We're going to use this equation. C squared equals, when we dealt with ellipses, it was A squared minus B squared. Now it's plus. So A squared plus B squared. And this is why it doesn't really matter what your... Um, 
calling a squared and what you're calling b squared. We're just adding these together. So 4 is one denominator, 9 is the other. That gets me 13. So c is going to equal square root of 13. That's going to represent the distance from center along uh, your transverse axis to your foci. In other words, I'm going to move um, the square root of 13 spaces left and right to get my two foci. So square root of 13, that's, I don't know, we'll call it three and a half. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. I'm going to go about right there. I'll make a little star. One, two, three, four. We'll go about three and a half. Okay. So there's my two foci. I'll put an F for foci. Okay, we're done. Example two. This one's all set up for us, so it should be a little quicker. This one's going to open vertically. Center. Negative four, two. Vertices are going to be up and down. Square root of 16 is 4, so 4 spaces. Negative 4, 6, negative 4, 2. Let's find co-vertices. Um, 25, square root of that is 5, so I'm going to move 5 left and 5 right. So we have 1, 2, and negative 9, 2. Now we connect our box. Okay, we draw our slant asymptote. We are vertical, so this was a vertex. The last thing I want to do is find my foci, c squared, it's going to equal 25 plus 16, which is 41, c equals the root of 41, which is between 6 and 7, so I'm going to go from center, um, 6.5 spots. So let's see. I'm sorry I'm doing this in red, but so there's a focus and there's a focus. Um, so actually I think we're gonna skip three. Let me let me go through one other thing. I didn't find the coordinates of the focus. So this root 41 from my center, I'm going up and down, so I'm gonna modify the y coordinate. So these will be located at negative 4. My center was negative 4, 2. This will be negative 4, 2. And then I add and subtract root 41 for the foci. Okay, so for example, 1, I was adding and subtracting root 13. So my foci were going to be located at, from center, negative 2, 1, moving left and right. I'm adjusting the x value plus or minus root 13 comma 1. So we're going to skip three. Um, we'll come back and talk about that next week. So only two problems. Make sure you check out exit slip and homework and I'll see you live for Zoom notes.